started by using my desktop. Takes a minute. Okay. That's coming later. Coming attractions. This uh, so as Clara did her form and she sent it over to me. She did the save as uh, PDF for fast flow and then she emailed it over to me and I took a look at it. And uh, that's the first thing that I'm going to do. Uh, is take a look at this and figure it out. So what is the workflow process that this form designed uh, defines? And so you do this in two ways. One is probably you're going to start by looking at the form. The other thing is you're going to do a little bit of a business analyst kind of job. Um, and, and go back to the people involved with this process and find out for sure uh, what you need to collect on a form, who needs to collect it, and things like that. So we can take a look at this form and uh, a few things right off the bat that we need to do. Uh, right here, big red letters, send receipts with all reports. Okay? So now we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to route this over to an administrator somewhere. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, we'll probably want to keep this somewhere. We're going to archive it. We're going to put it away. Um, we collect the data on this. We might want to do some reporting later on. Um, so we might keep the data uh, in a database. So those are some things we're going to look to uh, for how we use this form once it's been done. Now, uh, a couple of uh, on form design and how to design for fast flow. You know, Clara did mention a lot about uh, you know unique names for fields and things like that. And that is important. Um, in the form design, what happens is when you field to a form, it does give it a unique name, but you want to be friendly to the people that are building the workflow because if I have to make it into one of these fields and it's just named field number two, it makes it harder for me to figure out where this data goes and what it is. So what Claire does is, is she names those things nicely so that I can figure out that this is the date field and this is the employee name field. And like that, so that's a you know a, a good favor that she's doing for the uh, workflow engineers. Uh, the same with uh, you know the calculations. A lot of stuff is it's a, it's a determination of how the work is going to be done in the workflow. So there's some coordination between yourselves as a workflow engineer and the form designers to decide what the best way to get the data into the form is. Do we use calculation? Do we use a drop-down list? Do we do, do check boxes or radio buttons? How do we want to work with that? Um, do we integrate data from another system? So you know, in this case, Clara put on a drop-down list of just the employees uh, that that were going to be using this form. In fact, so we could also do that with a data pre-fill by recognizing the user that logs on onto the system and opens that form. We could put them into that. Uh, thing we can do is uh, maybe if we had a customer lookup table. Um, if we have a customer database, could uh, put the customer name into that. And a little uh, interesting tidbit: this is an actual expense report form for forms. But we also have another thing that we do. Um, we have a customer connection program where we reach out to our customers and, and talk to them. And we've built that to FastFlow as a form in FastFlow, and we linked it to our CRM system, our customer uh, relationship management system of Salesforce.com, which is a cloud app application. So when our team goes into the CRM system of Salesforce.com and, and clicks on the form customer's account, it opens the form with the customer's name and the customer's information that we know about them um, and fills out part of that form for the person. And then uh, that person would just enter the interview information. And then that form submits the data to a database. So there's just things that we do internally using our software. Um, let's scoot over to FastFlow here. Now, Tiffany, um, I said it's been heard that uh, that we use LDAP. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of an issue here. So again, I'll do a virtual machine itself. We're, because we moved uh, from the network to another network, we had a little bit of a change up there. So i uh, got a backup plan for that. You're on an LDAP system in your organization or an Active Directory system, so log in and log out isn't an issue. Uh, usually what happens is this, the uh, 
the top recognizes the user, authenticates against your um, authentication system of uh, Active Directory or LDAP or whatever it is, make sure that you have the access criteria and the ability to log in. And then, uh, it logs you in automatically without using a username and password. Um, you know, here I'm doing a demo, so chances are I'm going to log in a few different people. And so if I connected to LDAP, LDAP would prevent that from happening. Um, so what we see here is I've taken that expense report form that uh, Claire has created for us and put it into FastFlow. And typically what I do to start with is I'll load the form into FastFlow and then I'll put it onto a workflow that is just basically an initiator and then, and then it goes into what's called a find disposition. And that might be an archive system, um, database system, uh, sending it via email or something like that. So we have a final disposition that we can send this to. That's where I start typically is I, I know the bookends, I know where it's going to start and I know where it's going to end. So I get that kind of sample workflow for it just to get it up in the system and then we can have something to discuss and talk about. The form itself, when I uploaded it, we can take a look at its properties and again I'm logged in as a administrator, so uh, your typical users would only see a few buttons up here. As an administrator, um, I've got more buttons up here and a lot more buttons down here on the left. Um, I can take a look at this and see what the properties are. This is where I'd give it an, uh, a description and a name and a title. Uh, this is where I could upload the form and I can do versions. I can change uh, this and, and overwrite it and I'd have versions writing on top of versions. And go back and, and recut an older version there. So we can also use this to make not just the PDFs but the OFMs. And you can you can manage any kind of file in our system. So now I want to categorize it and that's how I make it available for my uh, users. And I can put that into a, a, any category that I have out on the system so that people would know where to look for it. Um, of course also search so they could easily go to uh, the search box and find it there as well. So I put this into multiple categories so that people can find it when they're looking for it. Another, uh, this wizard we can kind of bounce around in. A lot of these are self-explanatory. Uh, but one of the things, I'm going to try to hit on just some of the newer features um, for you who are already familiar with these wizards and seen these demos over and over again. Um, this little here called set fields gives us a little bit more information in the subject line. So when this comes into my workflow inbox or it sends out an email, the subject is going to generate based on a field in the form. So I can select any field on that form and create um, the set line in that uh, email message or that message in my inbox. So this is where again, like Claire uh, was talking about, name your fields in a nice way that's favorable for somebody like me who's building the workflow. Because now I can go in there and I can say, I want this to be the customer or be this the this the employee name. So in this way I'm going to go ahead and leave it as customer. Um, you know, we don't have signatures. At this point is where we would assign signatures to uh, the form itself, say who has the authority to sign this. Data storage allows us to store data in into uh, any data system we have access to with a um, ODBC access. And pre-fill is just like that, but the other way. It lets us pull any information from uh, the data sources we have access to, as well as, like I mentioned, the user profile. So in the user profile, uh, we can in the user's name, the user's uh, employee number, we can even extend that. So if you had more things that you needed for the sake of workflow, um, you add to the standard user profile, add more information. And what I'm talking about here is if I go to user settings up here on the left, and we'll look at uh, what Sean Curtis has defined as in uh, my user settings here. So see just the standard information. Um, I'm watching the screens here. It looks like we're having synchronization. Okay. Uh, so you can see my standard settings, my username, my password, my phone number, um, 
what I would like to log into when I when I come into the system. I can display the documents like I did when I came in here. Right, right away I came into the documents that I wanted to work with or my workflow inbox. Um, that's a little bit new is this is custom user settings. So this is the administrator sets up to add more information to a user. So that this is available when I, as this user, start a workflow. It knows my employee ID of uh, 007. Uh, it knows my zip code. It knows where I'm at. So um, some information that we wouldn't standardly collect. And again, this is something that you can read on your side if you have. Um, you know, issue that you want to pre-populate into a form for your user. So I'm going to documents here, and uh, what we saw was um, rise into the expenses category. A little bit of a deal with the network here. So if I start that workflow, right now it's really not going to go anywhere. So give me just a second and I'm going to open up the management console and look at the workflow and we'll show how we're going to add things to that like the uh, um, the requirement for um, the upload of the uh, reads. So this list of all the active workflows in my system, I just type in here expense. Do this real quick. See if I can pull that one up. And sure enough, there it is. This is my expense workflow. Um, not the arm, but the workflow. This is, uh, defines the routing and the actions that take place each step in the route. Like I said, I created bookends. Basically, I said this form um, has uh, you know certain things that we want to do with it. Right now, the route is pretty simple. It starts with the initiator. It does nothing. Um, so let's say we need to send this over to um, someone else. So, so this is where we get into a little bit of the business and this role you have to have is to find what your workflow is. We have a lot of different options that we can do. If we have something on the form, if we have data in that form, like a department, um, or if we know the role of the user, things like that, um, we pass that information to the form itself. And I can say, uh, this field um, you know, field relates to a specific item that we already know. So we can match these two to define where this is going to go. So if I said uh, maybe employee name, uh, it would match to a username or a user group or a custom setting that we have set up. Uh, we can also do you know our standard easy one to route you know basically to a group. A group being a department, a location, a user group, or even the role of another person. If we know specifically that this is going to go to um, let's see, uh, a role of um, in the accounting department, and go to uh, where is Penny Smart, my financial administrator. But I know that's the next step for all the expense reports. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to. Put that into going directly to that financial administrator role. As I mentioned, we also have um, group routing um, where we can run to a group and, and different features around um, allowing user groups to manage things. So that works well with things like committees such as the form approval committee or forms control committee. Uh, you know, so are things called route variables. Basically, Based on who started this or who's involved in this um, workflow, so I can say I know who started this workflow is Sean Curtis, and his department is uh, FormFast. That's right up here. FormFast is the department, so um, we send that to um, a manager or you know another user based on that user profile because we maintain a user list, and we've done that for the purpose of doing workflow. Uh, so let's go here. I want. To, I'm going to send that to Penny Smart. Okay. This auto approve step. When I hit the submit button on that form, it's just going to go away. In this case, I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to let that um, 
once I fill it out, it's going to stay in my inbox until I until I purposefully move it to the next step because I might want to fill out half of that form and come back to it later. So as an administrator, I'm going to give my users that option to do. Uh, the other step that we have here is to all types of steps that we have is this link a step to its form field. So we can do some logic based on uh, form fields. Uh, to all my text boxes, or we can do check boxes. So if a check box is checked, I can do a certain thing. If I can make a text field, then I can say, uh, hopefully Claire will put in a, maybe a total field in here, uh, totals here, and, and just for, for example purpose. Um, we'll text total. Um, and if they equal, if that is uh, say greater than uh, you know five hundred dollars, yeah. $500 is our, is our business rule that we're going to change the direction of where this goes from Penny Smart to uh, you know somebody else, maybe the corporate controller or something like that. So we put the logic in and we can basically identify the business rules as we need to. So if this, true, if this happens, if this rule is true, if that text field of, of Amex total is greater than $500, uh, this, this thing will take place. Uh, if it's less than that, it'll go to the next step. So I'd set up a a fallback plan. So if it doesn't prove through, then it would go to maybe um, the energy manager instead. I'm just send this over to uh, Penny Smart. Add up to my workflow routing. And so you see our, our route as it stands so far. So then, oh, hey, an attachment. So I have options here. I can say any user can add unlimited attachments, or I can say, no, I don't want, want to do that. I want the initiator to uh, enter receipts. And we're requiring that, so we make that a required option. So we have the, we can make it optional, we can make it required. And you said I defined which step I want that on instead of you know set ability to everybody. So I can define what step and can ask what I'm looking for in the attachment. Uh, we didn't put a signature field onto it, but we did in the. Uh, uh, the properties of the form is to define who can sign it, and in this step, we would define at what route step we need the signature. Because sometimes we have uh, the same person who requests something, uh, then also um, we have to sign it later in the in the process than when uh, the initial request is made. Signature fields on this uh, form at this time. And this is all flexible. So later we decided. We need to put that signature on there. We would add that field to the form. We would update the form in to FastFlow, and then we'd go in and define those steps of uh, where it needs to be signed. The new feature too is step dispositions or step actions, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But we always had this concept of final dispositions: what happens to this state in this form. When it's all done, when everybody's signed off on it and approved it, where does it go to live? Um, and that's you know often sending it to another archiving system or sending it to our own archiving system or to uh, send out an email notification or email the uh, PDF of it uh, to someone else or uh, you know a variety of things that we can do. Well, we've actually now taken that concept and we've moved it to at any point in our process we can do any of those as well. So I'm in the middle of a, of a process, I can also um, you know, send out an email that says that, uh, that notifies somebody of the current status of it or I get a database with the information that I've collected up to that point. So that's a really nice feature to add integration to other systems. Uh, you know, some systems might, uh, and I'll talk about our integration in a, in a little bit here, but we might launch a workflow from one system, manage it through FastFlow, Messages back 
and forth to that system at each step to let them know where the workflow is in its process. So we have two systems kind of watching this uh, this activity. Final disposition, of course, is what, what do we do when it's all been signed, completed, and approved and done? Um, same. Same as what you said about the uh, the route steps. It's the same type of uh, features and functionality. Uh, the thing that we have is also we are, we're able to and custom messages and email messages to um, the workflows. Um, so we would send out a generic email message, and that's the default still. It'll send out an, a generic message that just directs users back to the Passflow system to their work on the job. Um, but now we can actually override that message. It's uh, more information and embed information from the form itself. So we can take data that we collected up to that point and send it back to to the next person to give them more instructions um, as to what needs to be filled out and why. Really nice feature there. Uh, the rest of this is, is uh, again, on sorting it out, adding entitlements and um, missions and uh, and uh, who has control over it. So, so that's the departmentalizing and uh, giving permissions and, and categorizing it, so you can put it in different categories as well. So I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to go back over here to my document script. For, for network delays here, a different uh, scenario than typically. So, as a user, I've uh, let's say I've gone on site, I've done some training. I'm going to hit the start button to uh, start my expense report, and I'm going to show uh, just what this looks like now in the workflow. Uh, in a bit, I'll talk about other ways of accessing this form too. Uh, as part of my next phase of this presentation. So now the form has come up. I can put in a date here. Uh, what was that? I think it was uh, uh, what was it? 6-3 uh, or so. It doesn't really matter. I guess the star said. going to calculate all those out through the date plus one. Very nice. Um, got the employee drop down here. I can put my name into that. Customer, uh, we'll just say ABC Hospital. As I'm typing this information in here, that calculation that Clara did is is taking right here. So we'll do this. Uh, what did I say here? Six uh, dash five. five three. So the populate down here on that string. That's not as what we can is we have access in Fastflow to every single little bit of data uh, in this form. So every field that we have, we can use that again and merge that into uh, files for indexing. So this could be an indexing file that we are a value that we might want to search later uh, in the archiving system. Uh, we can do uh, we can grab all of this information and put it into text files or spreadsheets or databases and do reporting on it. So anything that we want to do with this data, we can do it uh, down the road. And then, let's see here, just put in some values here. So see the calculations that Claire has put into the form are, are all uh, still intact and all there. 
submit that. And so say enter receipt. So this is where I would browse for file, and I really um, hope that I have something on my desktop to uh, post. I can post any type of a dial uh, of a file. Sorry. In this case, I'm going to put a doc file into the to uh, just to uh, put something in there, and I'm going to upload that file into the system. Now the form is still here, so I wanted to you know, go back in and fill out maybe my mileage and uh, you know put in much I paid for the low and all that stuff. Or when done, I, I can uh, also view the the uh, attachments that I was attached to this. Um, but once done, then I just go ahead and uh, click the approve button, which lets, which lets this go on to its next uh, page. I accidentally clicked on I actually clicked on the uh, the, the form off and opened it. So uh, go for my workflow inbox. So see in my inbox here. I can come back to it at any time. And uh, now I'm going to click through, and that's going to send it over to our friend Penny, Penny Smart. Uh, and Penny's going to review that and do her part of it. Look at that um, attachment and make sure that it's all valid and good. Uh, so that's kind of the basics of how we can build a form, how we can turn that into a workflow, and do some of the things that we can do in uh, FastFlow. And now I'm going to change gears here into uh, the presentation and talk about some of the things that we've done that are a little more uh, new, a little more focused on what we're doing with FastFlow. So currently we've released 4.5, the version of FastFlow, and we're in the midst of 5.0, um, the late stages of, of bringing that all together. So there's a, a new focus on what we're doing um, with the product. The you know, product had always been kind of a, a workflow tool, you know, to to uh, enable workflow and uh, enable uh, document storage and, and a repository. But really taking a look at what we're really doing and who we're serving with the tool. And so we've with four distinct users. We've got the casual user and people that come in and fill out their expense report because they have to, or uh, you know, fill out an event report or they've seen something uh, at a hospital, um, fill out a, an incident report or uh, fill out a, a, a patient grievance or anything like that. So there are, there are the casual users who are going, going in and doing that sort of thing, and they're looking for your um, maybe your latest policy and procedures or something like that. Uh, we've also got the process owner, the business user. Now that's the person who is dealing with rap audits, who's dealing with uh, you know the case management, who's dealing um, you know with event reports and risk management and claims. Those are the type of people who want to know if something was submitted, who it was submitted by. What in its process of being uh, appealed if it's an audit or, or um, you know responded to um, what the what the potential risk is involved with that and things like that. So that's something where we're creating dashboards so that they can see everything that's happening related to the pro the process that they own. So it could be um, a variety of different processes that we can uh, that, that people are using this to own and control. The next level of user, next type of user, is the analytical or the business improvement focused user. And sometimes that's the process owner. Um, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the process owner who's delivering analytics and reports to a board or a committee. Um, and sometimes it is, uh, you know, somebody who's kind of in the process improvement area who wants to know what type of coding queries are occurring. In the organization, they want the analytics, they want the data, they want to know what's happening and where they can point the improvement at. So, um, their features um, and new availability of old features for those type users as well. And finally, the, the technologist, the person who's uh, in IT or in uh, you know the process uh, management department or information management department who uh, is getting these requests of. Uh, we want something to do this, and we need something else to do another thing. We need uh, we need a case management solution. We need a, a you know something to do audits, and we need something because 
Uh, we have no control over our contracts. Uh, so the person that's getting those requests is our technologist who says, um, I'm not for that. I've got fast flow and we can make that happen. So uh, going to uh, the things that we can we can do for each of these types of users. For the catch school user, I talked a little bit about um, you know, creating the forms, getting data onto forms so that people aren't filling it out themselves. So data transference. Basically, able to access data from your other systems. Uh, connecting with silos is, a, is one of the phrases that, that you might hear. Uh, get that information from other systems into the process, the forms, um, and, and being able to do that automatically. Added interfaces. So maybe casual users don't really want to deal with the fast flow interface. They just want to work from your EMR or your financial system or your Portal, or just email the link. Um, so we have interfaces that we can uh, put our face into other applications so that they can use it in the application they're comfortable with and they're already using. Of course, as always, the familiar forms. They're used to using forms. People understand the form. They understand the paper that they've been working with uh, forever. And so it's a smaller change process to move from uh, take the digital, if you keep the format the same and the, and the duties and functions they have to perform uh, familiar to what they've been doing in the past. So it's an easier transition. And, and then that, hey, when I open that form, data is already there uh, because you just interface all that data into that form for me. So now my job is, is even easier than it was before. Um, of course, the navigation. So we're introducing new features to make it easier to navigate the system. Uh, uh, you know, only uh, externally, but internally. Uh, and then, of course, we would also be maybe submitting an expense report or submitting uh, a request for something. So they don't have access to all those great features of tracking your workflow. So you submit a request for something, you can go into your inbox and you can go to your uh, workflow tracking and, and find where it's at. You can see where it's at in its process. So that's still there, and it's for that. that as well. Once I mentioned was the data transference and launching uh, from context or with context. This is an example of one of our partners. So they've uh, integrated a launch button into um, their application. So from an, uh, a medical record, we have a patient's medical record here, and they launch a coding query from this, and that's going to pass when they launch this. That's going to pass this all this time information about the medical uh, record into our uh, our system. So that form is going to open up and it's already going to populate the medical record number and the encounter ID and it's going to main that context all the way until we feed it back into the same EMR system. Uh, the embedded interface that I mentioned, we have web services. So uh, basically what is we can put our workflow inbox into uh, another system. We have a, a web service that allows uh, the technology to, to embed parts of our software into another system. In this case, it's HPF Web Station, but that's just a, just a use case example. We can uh, put that into SharePoint. We can put web applications. Uh, we can put it into a variety of other places. So in here is we've done two different web services, two different uh, calls to the form pass this one is over here on the left. It says the coding queries has two. So in in the position's uh, list of things to do, he knows that he has two coding queries. And if he clicks the link, it brings up this form fast uh, interface that shows the two coding queries. So we basically have filtered out any other information down to just this application and displayed that uh, for the there. Other examples of integration. Uh, you know the links. Uh, I talk about email links. Uh, we we have an external linking capability, so you can link via email. You can link via uh, you know just putting a link on a on an external site. Like I mentioned, we use Salesforce.com. Um, this is an example of maybe an intranet application. Um, those types of things are all available to make it easier for your casual users um, to not have to deal with uh, with. Uh, typically deal with, they can access it through existing applications. 
Another be being easier to work with is uh, the concept of application launch pads. So making things big icons, uh, easy clickable things to uh, understand, to quickly get into different areas of our software. We can create a, a or a launch pad page where someone can come in and deal with just the forms they need. Maybe you have a, an event report page that, that allows the users to click one button to get into an event report, or um, you know, your users uh, have several um, different types of applications that are all related, like in this HR example. Um, they would just basically clicking on these links would take them into categories of forms or maybe a dashboard. So these are uh, the things that we can now build based on our core um, fast flow software and the API, the application programming interfaces that we have built in. Now to that process owner, this is the person, the the, the site managers, the rack, the compliance insurance uh, audits, uh, them tools to track and respond to those uh, type of things. Uh, department managers who are dealing with personnel or their department issues, um, you know, personal actions, evaluations, change of status, position requests, those types of things that they want to ma manage and monitor throughout a life cycle uh, and not just click it and forget it kind of uh, thing. Purchases and budgeting requests, those are all processes that can be um, into uh, a dashboard managed and controlled. Uh, I the incident reports, claims, uh, patient comp complaints, uh, events, and uh, and also case management. You know, moving patients through the continuum of care, um, managing that through a, a dashboard of, of being able to see status and different types of data on that. We have a dashboard now in the application, and some of you are familiar with our Rack dashboard. We've taken that and we've extended that uh, to the point we can uh, work with you on a on a you know business analyst basis and uh, develop dashboards for you with you. Um, also, we have some pre-developed um, applications to which will make it easier for this business process owner. Uh, you know that was one of the first things that. that that we talked about even yesterday morning, Rob presented and, and talked about a stack of uh, of uh, applications that we have available, that we have um, supporting built around. We have the forms, we have best practice workflows, we have documents related to that. Um, so all of that is available so that you can quickly get up and running with these applications for the application owners. Uh, what our dashboard does, you see the, the bars across the top here with the inbox, the documents, the archives, reporting, and the dashboard. So what this does is it um, it gives you an application view rather than just seeing an inbox with all of your index items, all of the workflows that are related to you. This does something different. It sorts things based on an application. So you can just simply focus on one application and see anything in the inbox is related just to that. You click on the Documents tab and you can see the documents that are related to that specific application. And so um, event reports might have documents that are specific just to event reports. And you don't have to go to um, another tab to find, you know, go through a category list. Basically, you're seeing the categories related to this application there. Archives works the same way. Anything that has completed its life cycle and has been put into the archives, um, you would see just the things that are related to this application. Uh, we've had reports and analytics for quite a while, and um, it's been kind of in the background. It's been a, a little bit uh, hard to get to. So one of the features of our dashboard is bringing the report and the analytics up to the forefront because we're really we're collecting a lot of data. We're collecting a lot of process information about timelines of how long it takes to do things. Uh, who's doing what? But so the reporting is really taking a, a more um, visible role within the fast flow. Um, and the last thing on, on the tab list here is the dashboard, and that's kind of giving you uh, all active items related to that application, so you can see um, where they're in their process, and you can also color code and get, get some information uh, red flags going on. Uh, you can see the the screenshot here I've got of a dashboard. Um, this happens to be, uh, you can see event management dashboards. 
you can see different categories of events, different types of events, whether or not there's patient harm involved, uh, the location it occurred, uh, what type of event was it, a near miss, an incident, or an unsafe condition. Uh, you can get uh, over on the harm scale, it's uh, tagged to color code the harm scale. We can also color code um, any field in this dashboard. So any field, uh, if you wanted to red flag any uh, pressure ulcers, uh, or if you wanted to red flag any uh, anything that had patient harm, you can do that. I think it is highlighted on here. It's just a lighter color. And on my screen, it's a little bit hard to see. Um, maybe not on yours. Uh, but basically, you can highlight anything based on, on any of the data in here. Um, so tools behind the scenes that help us create this and define this and build this around your business needs. Also, want to talk about the the reporting tab. Uh, so the reason I'm kind of breaking it out and talking more about reporting and the dashboards rather than the inbox documents and archive are because inbox documents and archive are kind of concepts that we've already had for a long time. And what this board does is it ties those all together based on an application, so it sorts that out for you. Reporting and dashboard tab here are, are two kind of newer features. And so the reporting now brings to the forefront the reports related to um, the event reports. So event reports being the forms that are processed to report an incident in your hospital, um, reporting being the analytics behind that to analyze what's happening in your hospital. Um, and yet a clean view of that. So it would be a, a partial list of the uh, analytic reports that are available uh, in the system. Uh, putting up that first report would bring up my incident report by count, uh, account by incident type. And so that would show a chart and it would show the actual data below that. And you see all the, the small page that I have around it over here on to the right. Um, I can also export these, so I can export it here. It's exported into Excel, so I can work with that data, uh, you know, a little bit more. Uh, I export it as a PDF. I can export it as a text document. Um, I export it as, as a variety of different things. And of course, this data all lives in a database, and we, uh, the fast flow, uh, has has ownership of this data, so we can control that. We can output it in in a variety of different ways. The other thing about the analytics portion of it is you can schedule these reports automatically without you having to, uh, you know, go request the report. So if you have somebody, if you're a process owner and somebody uh, re asks you for a report on the status of, of, uh, of the process, you can set that up and you can uh, come in here and schedule that to run on uh, maybe every Friday basis. Uh, when do you want it to run? Maybe in an off hour, non peak hour after Friday business. Business. Uh, and uh, what type do you want to do? You you would pay a report, and then you would uh, define who you want to notify that that report is there. So uh, basically, if I had this set to run every Friday, um, the report will data generate its uh, its images and send a notification to any anybody that you want to do on this notification list. The report is ready to be viewed, so they can uh, click a link to view that report. Not that it's, it's scheduled, it's run, they would get a, a report as of that time basis, but they would also have the ability to then, uh, you know, change the time date um, of, of that window is, because a report is really just a window of this start time and end time, so they have access to generate a report that's a little bit different. So if they saw something in the report, they wanted to get a little more context, uh, they can do that as well. And you know, as part of making this easier for you, the uh, the process owner um, to to deploy applications and get up and running and, and serve you better. We've also come out with some practice applications um, with human resources, code and query, incident report, and risk management, audit monitor management. We have case management. We have uh, content management. Uh, we have an entire list of of, of all that the. the to get a quick overview of that, and I mentioned this yesterday, is to uh, to check out formfast.com, uh, click on the video gallery link to the top right, 
that will bring you to a listing of, of, of you know, short two-minute videos. They're not going to take a lot of your time to, uh, to get an idea of what it is we're talking about, what we have to offer in those areas. So take a look at those uh, if you're interested in that, see what we've got. Of course, the core basis of all of this is that tool set for the technologist. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the concepts, it talks with uh, Scott Fuller, one of our uh, well engineers. Uh, he always says uh, he justifies the purchase of his table saw with building the deck in his backyard. But once he built that deck in his backyard, he's also going to build a fence and a porch swing and, and you know, 10,000 other things with it. So that's kind of the, the concept we have as a tool set for the technologist is uh, we've got all these tools in place. You have somebody coming to you asking for uh, a, you know, an application for contract management or for to deal with purchase requests or you yourself need to deal with uh, access requests to systems um, or you know, things like that. You've got several requests on the list and you're trying to prioritize those and also find budget for, for all those different applications, um, we're, our concept is to provide you a tool set to make it easy for you to address those needs with this tool set. You learn this one thing, uh, you support this one thing, uh, your users only have to learn one thing. Uh, it makes everything easier across the board. So this can be an enterprise-wide solution and uh, that, that's a powerful tool to address your many needs. Um, so, so that's kind of the core offering for a long time is, is, is to give you a powerful tool, tool set. Uh, and so now we've really been leveraging that ourselves, uh, leveraging the tool set to come up with these integrations and, and better ways of serving the business process users, uh, better ways of displaying the analytics that we're, that we're putting and, uh, and able to show, and better ways to serve your end users so that they can integrate, better, integrate into their daily uh, work processes. And at um, um, the end of my slides, and I think that we might have a few questions uh, coming up here. Yeah, for just a, a, a quick question here, because we're almost out of time. Um, questions, are user lists populated via LDAP? Yeah, so the LDAP integration now, so where we can uh, point to your LDAP system and pull the users in from, from that. Uh, and then we also manage and, and uh, maintain the synchronization of that. And we're ready to authenticate against LDAP as well. Perfect. Well, thanks for the presentation, John. There's there's a lot of exciting things that are going on, especially with with FastFlow and some of the applications that we're developing for it. So thanks for sharing uh, all those new features. Uh, as a reminder, we encourage you to keep an eye out for future FormFast webinars going forward. Uh, we're opening more online events showcasing our products, as well as bringing you more educational content on current issues in healthcare. Be connected with with FormFest in a number of different ways. One by participating with, in a FormFast user group forum, you can do by visiting www.formfastusers.com. Another way to engage with us is in social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. This concludes the FormFast Visionary Showcase and user group meeting for 2011. Thanks to all our presenters as well as everyone who attended. We know you have busy schedules, so we really hope the content was valuable to you. I encourage you to become a part of our FormFast Advisory Board. As advisory, you'll be able to share your thoughts on FormFast products, as well as trends in healthcare in general. Plus, you'll be eligible for exclusive prizes, giveaways, and other perks. Once again, to register for that, go to formfast.com slash advisory dash board. Once again, a solution that you feel would be beneficial for your hospital, feel free to contact us at 1-800-218-3512 or to visit formfat.com slash UG11 to schedule a free personal demo with one of our specialists. Again, that website is www.formfast.com slash UG11. To make sure to find at the conclusion of this meeting, you will be presented with a web page to either book a demo or join our advisory board or both. For your attendance and for your attention, and we hope to see you at, see you at our next FormFast webinar. Goodbye.